ES Audio. Hello, I'm Mark Blunden, and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily coming up. Row over computer generated rapper accused of perpetrating racist stereotypes. But first, researchers are hoping a pioneering womb cancer test could reduce time taken to diagnose women with the condition by helping them receive treatment much faster than is currently available. Joint research by UCL and the University of Innsbruck, published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, found low cost PCR tests that took samples from the cervix or vagina were able to successfully detect womb cancer. We really strive to make this test which is easy and simple and doesn't require you know a specialist referral. You can even take the sample yourself and have this certainty that whether you do need further testing or you're basically cancer free. The survey's lead author Dr Kiara Herzog is a researcher at Innsbruck's European Transitional Oncology Prevention and Screening Institute which receives funding from the Eve Appeal, a British gynecological cancer research charity. I've been working on this study for about two years now, but the research team around my uh, supervisor, Professor Martin Wittschwenter, has, so he's probably been driving this for about 20 years. So it really is a kind of breakthrough step now that we're able to have this test and, and help women with it. Currently in the UK, women who present common symptoms of womb cancer are offered a transvaginal ultrasound. But in the future, researchers hope the new test will speed up the time it takes for a diagnosis. We're offering the test in Austria and Germany from the 1st of November 2022. We're also currently working with partners in other countries such as the UK where we really hope we can offer the test um, by 2023. And there's obviously also further studies ongoing to really demonstrate the performance of the test in a variety of settings. Now, a record label has dropped the first computer-generated wrapper amid an online row that the software-based creation relied on racist stereotypes and used highly offensive language. Only days ago, Capital Music Group said it had signed what is essentially an algorithm known as FN Mecca. But now the company says it's severed ties with the project, apologising to the black community for insensitivity. The AI-generated rapping avatar, which has over 10 million TikTok followers, was developed by Anthony Martini and Brandon Lee using technology by music company Vidya, with its music and lyrics harvested from across the web, video games and social media. But Capital Music Group has now ditched the rapping robot following a campaign by activist group Industry Blackout. Users of streaming platform Plex are being warned to change their personal details held with the company after customers received a notification informing them of a massive data breach. And of course, we're getting the old access to a limited subset of data line common by companies playing down the nature of the attack. Plex has not said whether anyone's personal media libraries have been compromised. And the moral of this story, perhaps consider buying a hard drive and don't rely purely on the cloud. Tech entrepreneur William Sachiti says his bright green driverless cargo vehicles will soon become a common sight to drop off deliveries in London after successful trials delivering medicines to care homes during lockdown. So we designed these spaceship-like cars that are designed specifically for autonomous delivery. There's not even a driving seat. But what about Britain's creaky old roads? We trained our cars to be able to drive in rural Wales, for example. So I'm not worried about the infrastructure so much because we teach the machines to work with what they have as a opposed to having to spend billions upgrading the road network. So are the robots taking over? I'm of the view that autonomous vehicle technology is going to be seen more as invisible technology. These will be the service machines that you don't see, but they're critical to our infrastructure. Now, we'll take you down to Penguin Beach at London Zoo on a rather rainy day to join in on the annual weigh-in. We can't wait all of them in one day, so this will just be a process that we do over the next few weeks so we can make sure they're healthy. The Regent's Park Zoo is home to 72 penguins who unsurprisingly love the rain and get what keeper Jess Jones calls the zoomies. To weigh a penguin, you first have to encourage them onto the scales. Why is cataloguing the seabirds' vital statistics regularly so important? All of this information is put onto our zoological information management system. We're then able to compare weights to other 
other penguin weights across the world just to make sure that on average all of our penguins are doing okay and we've not got any very fat penguins or very skinny penguins. And some of the little penguin chicks get a little hand onto the device. Penguins eat sprats, in fact up to 50, along with chunks of sand eel and squid. But how do zookeepers tell the birds apart? It's down to their unique patterns and coloured beads on their flippers. I'm right next to the penguins. If I say I have a favourite, they might hear me. <laughs> so I don't want to upset them. <laughs> now, coming up, the huge dino footsteps discovered in Texas. These are awesome, awesome tracks. But you'll have to come back after the ads. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. A study is suggesting that stopping statin treatment early could substantially reduce lifetime protection against heart disease. Researchers at London's Queen Mary University say this is because the benefit of taking the cholesterol-lowering drugs is seen later in life. Statins are one of the most commonly prescribed drugs in the UK, with millions taking them to cut their chance of a heart attack or stroke. And finally, while the heavens have thankfully opened over London at last, in Texas the drought has revealed the footprints a giant dinosaur thought to be 113 million years old. A dried up river has shown the imprints from the Acrocanthosaurus, which is a cousin of the fearsome T-Rex, for the first time in over two decades. Just sweep a little bit of the dirt and dust away, and this is what you'll find. Dinosaur tracks. That's Paul Baker and the friends of Dinosaur Valley State Park. You see the claw marks, pretty good size, theropod. These are awesome, awesome tracks. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for The Leader from the Evening Standard here in London and we'll be back on Friday at 1pm. See you then.